Is Mexico all drug cartels and fancy beach resorts? We don't think so. Come with us as we travel by RV with 12 other couples on an epic three-month adventure to explore the culture, history, and food of our neighbor to the south. Hi, I'm Rhonda. I'm Angie. And we're Adventures in Nomadness in Mexico. Yeah, so if you're new to our channel, we're on a three-month epic excursion around Mexico in our RV with 12 other uh, RVers. <laughs> Say that fast five times. So today we're heading off to Guanajuato and we're gonna spend four nights there. We'll have some more awesome excursions through caravans of Mexico. See you down the road. Hey, we're waiting at a ga uh, gas station to do a Green Angels switchover. And you're wondering, what are Green Angels? Uh, they're sort of like a triple A. They're uh, hired by Mexico, basically, to basically roam the roads and help uh, motorists out that might be in trouble, with, whether it be mechanical, flat tires, need gas, all that kind of stuff. So as part of our caravan, they've, they've actually esco escorted us quite a bit of the way, so they are Truly a gem and a great reason to be in it. this particular caravan because the owner of the company has uh, kind of like pre-reserved pre, uh, with them to, to kind of escort us through certain areas. So pretty cool. They're there to help and they're very nice and very awesome. And Ron is driving. How's it driving? Here they have something called a third lane. So you have two lanes and then you have a wide shoulder. If you see uh, striped lines, white lines on your right. You should be straddling that to create a third lane in the middle. So that's a passing lane for either side most of the time. So it's just that a lot of times it's, it's not at all safe. Um, so you really kind of have to use your own best judgment. Um, even if you have that third lane, you still have to figure out if it's a good, good time to pass or not. Yeah, fun times. All right, well, we'll show you more of the road conditions. This road's a little rougher than roads we've been on. All right, a typical stop for us is at like an Oxo or a Pemex station. Uh, we'll stop for what they call body breaks, bathroom breaks, get gas, get food, whatever. So we're on our lunch break right now. We've been here for about a half an hour. We're getting ready to pull out. And poor Bernardo, he, he is the owner's son, the company's owner's son. And so he uh, goes along with us as access translator. And also he's kind of like logistics guy. He's awesome. Uh, but anyway, his car is having problems. And once we talked about the Green Angels, they're helping him out try to get his car started because he's very, very, very important. Cool! Morning, Rhonda's filling up our Berkey with water and we're gonna go start the day. So yesterday was a really long day driving. It was less than 200 miles, but it was through towns and you know, when you have 12 rigs, you're stopping at lights and trying to catch up. And so it was definitely a long day, longer than most of us had thought it was going to be. But it's all good, we got here, had a nice little happy hour outside. It was a little bit warmer last night than the previous night at Zacatecas. And now we're off to a city tour. So we're gonna be gone most of the day and excited to explore another part of Mexico. Let's go. Oh, why did I show you my name on a bag? Oh, they're gonna do laundry for us too. How cool is that? And uh, uh, not sure uh, the name of this RV park that we're at. So I will fill you in on that when we can.
Hey, we're in San Gabriel de Barrera, and it's a, a basically this big casa, hacienda that was built in the 17th century by a wealthy Spaniard. We're getting a tour today. The best thing about caravans of Mexico, they hire local guides from the tourist office, so very, very knowledgeable. Uh, so this entire hacienda uh, was lived in, obviously, by a wealthy Spaniard, and he oversaw the entire uh, smelting or melting operation of the gold and silver in the area, and there's a lot of mines. And today, who well, operates those mines? Canadian company. Yeah, this pretty. particular room that we're in uh, is kind of used for family gatherings now, but it actually used to be where the women worked because they couldn't work in the smelter. So here they actually separated by hand the gold and silver. Wow. Uh, so Guana Guanajuato is the third largest uh, producer of silver in Mexico, Zacatecas being the first. All right, let's go on our tour. Wanna move my feet, wanna drop my one, wanna move my feet, wanna drop my one, wanna move my feet, wanna drop my one, wanna move my feet, wanna drop my one. Guanajuato is a really cool city of about 280,000 people. Now we went to the top of the mountain and we're walking down or you can take a funicular down uh, if you don't want to walk. So this kind of reminds us actually of being back in Positano where you're walking down the alleys and there's no roads up here so people that live up here on these hillsides have to walk up and down to get their food. They're in great shape, way better than we are. <laughs>
Well, we're exploring Guanajuato, but that wasn't the original name. The original name was Guana Ex uh, That was the original uh, indigenous people's name. And then the Spaniard, Spaniards came and it got changed to Guanajuato. This is a really eclectic town. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, definitely feels like a European town as far as the really small streets. It's very colonial in some areas, uh, very 19th century in other areas, and very, very old in other areas. So uh, we're looking forward to coming back tonight too. Uh, it's all lit up at night and that should be fun as well. So fascinating town, I'm so glad we're here. So what do you got to add to that? Name comes from the word frog because they thought that the mountains looked like frogs. So that's kind of the background on the name. So it definitely, it, it meant the mountains that look like frog or a mountain that looks like a frog is what the Guana Ex Wado meant. So when you have two mountainsides, what usually happens in the middle of that mountainside when it rains? Right, you have rivers. Well, there used to be a river that flowed through here. 1905 was the last big flood. And at that time, after that happened, and there was a lot of people killed, um, they decided to do something about it. So what they ended up doing is leveling the town, basically. So they, much like Seattle, they built over the top of it. Um, and what was the river, they put a sewer below that and made the river area an actual uh, drive, tunnel. Yeah. tunnel. So it's the only place like this that exists anywhere. There's something like 127 arches they put in there. To support the city. Yeah. Having a late night snack because it was hours and hours since we had lunch. Behind you, behind you. Yeah. He's carrying a really heavy thing, and Angie was blocking. <laughs> of course I was. Okay, what are you eating? Tamale, chicken, chicken tamale. So they cook this in a, a corn husk. They wrap it in the corn husk and cook it, and you take that off and uh, add your own like sauce or cheese or cream and so i just put a little hot sauce and a tiny bit of cream and how is it it's really good okay all right well this is an experiment today we're off to san miguel del ende we're taking the dogs with us in their packs that they really haven't spent much time in uh, and we're gonna see how this goes it's a little bit long of a day for them to be leaving them back in the rv and it's starting to get warm during the day, so we'll see.
<laughs> I'm not getting more of this. Well, the restaurant that our group is going into looked awesome, but because we have the dogs with us and we're, we have the dogs with us because it's such a long day, we opted to find our own place. Gracias. So we're sitting near a park and we're eating outside and this is an awesome experience actually because I love to sit out like this and eat or drink coffee. And mine too, and people watch, so this is actually, we miss our group, but this is actually awesome. <laughs> Hola, so our time Hola. in San Miguel de Rende is coming to a close. We haven't had very much time here. And uh, it's been kind of a little bit of a hurried full day, and we've only spent maybe um, a couple hours here. So we got to the lunch spot, and they don't allow dogs, of course, so we're fine with that. So we had our own nice lunch. It was kind of nice being on our own. Uh, but then we had a trolley tour, and we didn't film anything of that. We didn't have a good viewpoint, and it was really hot on board. We ended up getting off about halfway and walking back the rest of the way. And that was kind of more our style. We definitely like to uh, walk around at our own pace. A little bit harder today with the dogs to, to walk around, so I don't feel like we've been able to fully explore uh, San Miguel de Ande um, just because of you know having to keep them in tow, but also it being kind of hot and and not ha not having very much time on top of it. But it looks like a super cool town. Well, I would describe it as more of a high-end town. So if you like more high-end style and high-end shopping and higher prices and nicer restaurants and I would say this is your thing. Yeah, it's a great spot. Lots of tourism, lots and lots of tourists here. Uh, lots of gringos and lots of people from all over. So it's lots a, of expats. Mm -hmm. uh, great place to live. And um, what else? Uh, very colonial. So really cool architecture here. So it's it's definitely worth a visit if you have a longer amount of time. Definitely would have liked to have. Uh, spent some time, but that's part of this tour, you know, you kind of see bits and parts of, of, of this place, of this beautiful country, and then you can come back. So I would come back here and spend at least a week, if not longer, because there's a lot to do here. Most of which we barely even got to remotely see. But next time. Uh, we are staying at the Boogumville RV Park. It, it, if you come here on your own, it's going to be 395 pesos per night. So that's roughly mm, about 20 bucks or so. Uh, so this is kind of what it looks like. Our whole group's having a happy hour over there. But it's a big open field that's very flat. So it's actually pretty nice and it's very quiet. They do have one bathroom for men, one bathroom for women. Uh, they have a shower, good hot water, pressure. Mm, I would use as little soap as possible just because it'll take you a while to rinse that soap off of you, especially your hair. So the electrical, a 15 amp outlet, and there's water and there's sewer. Now with the electrical, we plugged our surge protector in to check it when we first got here and it was showing no errors. So we did plug in and then later on there was a low voltage. So low voltage can be one of the biggest issues. And of course with our electrical management system on board, that just shut it down. Uh, fortunately with our solar and our lithium, we have not had to be plugged in yet. Um, the owner is super, super nice. He is making dinner. Um, they're arranging dinner for us tonight. So they do have a cafe and a bar here. So if you uh, let them know, they'll make dinner for you. So that will be quite nice tonight because we're leaving tomorrow morning.